Good afternoon and welcome to the March 17th, 2021 meeting of the Murfreesboro Planning Commission. We'll call the meeting to order and we do have a quorum present today. Our first item of business is to approve the minutes of the February 3rd, 2021 Planning Commission meeting. Everyone's had a chance to review those minutes. We would accept a motion on that. Move for approval. Second. A motion and a second to approve the minutes of February 3rd, 2021 meeting. All in favor, please state aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. In our consent agenda today, we have, looks like, six items here. Item A is River Downs Annex, Section 2, Phase 1, Final Plat for 43 Lots on 17.41 Acres, Zoned RS-10, located along Fire Rock Drive, Alcorn Properties, LLC, Developer. Item B is Hayden Cove, Section 1, Final Plat for 46 Lots on 19.61 Acres, Zoned PUD, located along Veterans Parkway, Alcorn Properties, LLC is the developer. Item C is West Point, Lot 5, Final Plat for one lot on 0 0.89 Acres, Zoned Light Industrial, located along BC Road, Charlie B. Mitchell, developer. Item D is Parkway Place, Section 3, Final Plat for one lot on 49.1 acres, zoned PID, located along Richard Reeves Drive and Logistics Way, Al Near Developer. Item E is Tuckasee Holdings, LLC, Final Plat for one lot on 1.02 acres, zoned Commercial Highway, located along Memorial Boulevard, Tuckasee Holdings, LLC, Developer. And item F is the Stones River Mall resubdivision of lot 1A, final plat for three lots on 35.21 acres, zoned commercial highway located along the north side of Old Fort Parkway, SVAP2, or the second Stones River LLC developer. Any items on the consent agenda that uh, anyone on the Planning Commission or staff would like have to have removed for further discussion? And if not, we would be ready for a motion on the consent agenda. Second. Motion and second. All in favor, please state aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, next we have plats and plans. Item A has been withdrawn from today's agenda. We'll see it at a later date. Item B is Kingdom Crest Commercial Section 1 Master Plan and Preliminary Plat for three lots on 20.33 acres. Zone Commercial Highway, Swanson Development LP is the developer. Mr. Barbie, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Chair Jones and members of the Planning Commission. Uh, today I'm bringing you Kingdom Crest Commercial Master Plan and Preliminary Plat for three lots on 20.33 acres. Uh, the site is located just on the southeastern corner of Franklin Road and Veterans Parkway, just across Franklin Road from the Kroger location. Um, master plan shows access points on Franklin Road, Veterans Parkway, and Jack Burns Drive. Uh, the plan is generally in good order. Uh, we would request that any approval be subject to staff comments. Okay. Any questions for Mr. Barbie or comment? If there are none, I'll make a motion that we approve subject to all staff comments. No second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please state aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Next, we have Wind Woods, Section 2. It's a master plan amendment and preliminary plat for 39 lots on 9.02 acres, zoned RSA Type 2, located west of Florence Road along Effie Seward Drive, AMH 
TN Development LLC is the developer. Mr. Cooper, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Madam Chair and Planning Commission members. Uh, the item before you today is a master plan amendment and preliminary plat for the Winwood sec Winwood subdivision sec second section. Uh, the subject property is off of Florence Road. However, it will only have access to Florence through section one by means of Effie Sort Drive and Kindness Way. Uh, to the south, there is a to the south of the property. There is the future five-lane cherry five-lane cherry lane connector that will be constructed at a later date. Uh, a new developer has bought the property and wishes to convert the previously approved townhomes uh, to a to single-family lots. Um, the road network and connections will remain the same, and the units will drop in this section from 87 to 38 units. Uh, the lots that back up to the future. Cherry Lane Connector will not have access to the road, which will be expressed on the final plat. Uh, this plat is generally in good order, and we ask that any approval be made subject to staff comments. Uh, I'm here to answer any questions, and so is uh, Matt Taylor, who is representing the developer. Okay. Questions and comments from the Planning Commission? Could be a first. We don't know yeah, how, to, how to, to respond. <laughs> it's a bit unusual to go from townhomes to yeah. residential, but okay. Mm -hmm. Happy to see it. Oh, good. Thank you. Thank you. So as you can see, they'll, they'll have the temporary turnaround uh, right in the future Cherry Lane connector until that road has been constructed. These will all have landscaping behind them as well to, to show that it will have no access to the future Cherry Lane. What, what is that one little section in the middle? Your cursor just went over. If you come down uh, to this, the left, right there. This right here is open. Uh, above that, looks looks like a golf club right there in the middle of the, yeah, what is that? That's just uh, showing a change on the plan. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the, the mail kiosk location uh, has been decided to be as part of section one, if I believe. And so there's parking by the mail kiosk and... Yes, there will be. The zoning is, uh, I believe it's RSA type... Two. Type two. Um, so they will have to park enough for each lot on the lot. Okay. So I take it this change, uh, the size of these lots changed and, and everything in this section to go from this 87 townhomes to 37 single family, is that what you said? 30, 38, 30. I believe. Yeah, they, uh, it, the, the new ownership group um, has a different plan for this area. Uh, rather than doing the townhome units, they're used to doing single family. Um, okay. What is the extra lot plat for? It says 39 lots. And then oh, sorry, I may have miscounted. It's 39. So uh, the townhomes were previously on in HPR, so everything was one lot. And so <clears throat> in order to meet the minimum requirements, um, we got the density in about half. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. And Madam Chair, the, the master plan amendment is required because 
the, the previous iteration of the townhome plan showed, showed private streets. This shows a uh, public street, public street connections to the former, or to the section one. And so the master plan for the balance of the subdivision didn't contemplate this as single family detached with public streets. Hence the reason why you're seeing this as a master plan amendment, as well as the preliminary plan for section two. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Blum. Did, did I hear you say that there would be no access to once the Cherry Lane ex extension comes? There, no access for the individual lots. There will still be, uh, I believe this is Kindness Way that cuts all the way down to the future Cherry Lane extension. Um, that's currently served by a turnaround easement and once this road is constructed, it will it will have access there. But these okay. lots right here Correct. won't have access to the back. Okay. Okay. Any additional questions regarding this item? If there are none, I'll make a motion that we approve subject to all staff comments. I'll second. Motion and a second. All in favor, please state aye. 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 Any opposed? I think we've got a vote there. Motion passes. Thank you. Next item is West Long Commercial North, Lot 1, final plat for one lot on 1.88 acres, zoned PUD, located along West Long Boulevard and Veterans Parkway. Donald McDonald Charitable Remainder Unit Trust is the developer. Mr. Cooper. Hello again. Uh, the final plat before you is an out parcel of the West Long Commercial Subdivision on the corner of West Long Boulevard and Veterans Parkway. Uh, this is a commercial out parcel that is to the southeast of the Annandale apartment complex. Uh, this initially went through our process as an administratively reviewed plat. However, there was discussion on whether or not we would allow the site to have direct access onto Veterans Parkway. Uh, staff in conjunction with the Public Infrastructure Department did not believe allowing the access was appropriate, so we denied the plat accordingly. They have since requested that the item come before you uh, in order to allow them to have access onto Veterans Parkway uh, from the site. Uh, other than this access question, the plot is in, in good order. Uh, Katie Knoll is here to represent the city's decision making regarding this opportunity. Good afternoon. Um, members of Planning Commission and Chair Jones. We were initially brought this lot and looked at a site plan at a pre-application meeting. I had initial concerns about access at that meeting. They were relayed at the time. Um, part of our concerns is there's a pretty good grade change between this lot and Veterans Parkway because you're coming down from the interchange. There's also the guardrail because of the grade, because of that slope and that interchange, that we just think visibility and sight distance would be an issue. We looked at possibly if maybe a decel a right turn decel lane would be appropriate. Because of that guardrail, it's not something that really can be installed there. So it just there's we just see a lot of challenges with that access. I'm not sure if I can. Is there a site plan that shows the way it's drawn up currently versus what they're asking for? Not at this time, no. Okay. So, so the final plat that we're looking at today, do we have a picture of that? Uh, I apologize, I'm not used to being the one operating the... That's all right. No, we're I went too past. far. Yeah. Where is it? It may not be in there. <coughs> is it in here? No. I don't think we do. Or is it yeah. someplace else? It should be there. Yeah. Yes. <coughs> Somehow it's not on the PDF. Yeah. Take a copy of it. I'll start one with the... Uh, okay. And so when we see this 
Ms. Knoll, it's going to be the, what the applicant is requesting. It's showing how they would like to have it. Is that uh, what, we're, what we're going to see? What we're asking for is a note on the plat that would prevent access to Veterans Park Bay. Madam Chair and members of the Planning Commission, at this point, with the plat, they're trying to create this lot as a lot of record. Um, our staff's analysis was that was that a right turn at this location would not be appropriate. And as such, as, as would be typical in situations like this, uh, we are requesting that they place a note on the plat um, stating that, that this lot will have no access onto Veterans Parkway. And that serves several purposes. One, it communicates this, um, it, when it sets the expectations for um, this property, not only to this, the proposed developer, but in the event that this developer um, uh, does not move forward with developing this lot, if, it get, if the property changes hands, or even if he does move forward with development and the property changes hands, as, as commercial properties often do, and the new owner knows, he's put, he's put on notice by the note on this plat that um, that the city will not allow direct direct driveway access onto Veterans Parkway. So it's it's kind of standard practice that we have when we have um, a street that we want to limit access to to put a note on the plat limiting access. So can I ask a question? So Jennifer actually got a, a road view of this, and so. Even if we didn't ask them to or uh, allow them to have uh, access to Veterans Parkway, I'm assuming we're still going to ask them to put a right turn lane into West Lawn Boulevard or, or no? No. So is there going to be a light there? Uh, eventually with those intersections, yes. It might be something that we'd ask for with those improvements. <clears throat> okay. Uh, with the West Lawn Pavilion development. And the primary concern is safety with the change in grade, correct? Yes, and the guard and the visibility with the guardrail. So, are we going to get to hear from the applicant too? I don't mean to. Mr. Huddleston, welcome. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Chair Jones, members of the Planning Commission. I'm Bill Huddleston with Huddleston Steel Engineering. Uh, we performed a site distance study at this exact location and we submitted that on February 4th. Is that in y'all's packet by chance? Have any of y'all seen that? Take that as you haven't. It's, it's not in the packet. Okay. We conducted a site distance study for the above reference project for the proposed right in right out access on the Veterans Parkway. We found that the site distance of the proposed right in right out access on the Veterans Parkway is at least 1300 feet to the north. That exceeds the city requirements of this roadway. The city requirement is 550 feet. We more than double that. We see no reason why right in right out access could not be provided at this location. Now Ms. Noel mentioned two things that have to be looked at. Number one is the changing grade from the roadway level down to the lot. Uh, number two is the guardrail. So what we're looking at is a right in, right out, which is a free flow condition. And so for the right out, they would come to the roadway and look back to the left. And the question is how far can you see back to the left? And the answer is 1,300 feet, and here's why. That roadway is up here. Most of the ground on the lot's down here, and it will be filled when they do a site plan. So really, to me, it's a site plan issue, but that's okay, we can address it now. The roadway's here, but the first 20 feet outside of the roadway is still at this level. You have 20 feet there for the car to be sitting before it drops down. So because you're at road level, there's not a change in, in elevation that's a, a, that's a bother. Plus, you're out far enough past where the guardrail is that potentially could block your vision, but it doesn't because you're sitting on that flat 20 feet that up, that's up against the roadway. So I was out there personally, and you can, once you pull to the roadway and get ready to take your right out on the Veterans Parkway, you can see cars coming over the bridge. So they're 1,300 feet away. There's plenty of time to turn out there. Be happy to answer any questions. Bill, if you proposed a right in, right out, 
are you far enough away from West Lawn Boulevard if you're going to be turning right on veteran? You follow yes. what I'm trying to ask? Yes, you're a okay. commercial lot width there. Okay. Because you're talking about putting this right in, right out. On the west, on the far end of the lot. Right, I'm with west you. West Lawn as I can get. Okay. That's where we check the site distance. The north end of the lot? Is that where you, you would be on the north end? And you, uh, uh, if if no. West Lawn's along the east side of the lot, yeah. Um, yeah, it's your, you're right, Rick. Yeah, I mean, if you're saying you're looking north, you've, got, you're, you've moved the, where you're measuring from is the north side of the lot. That's correct. <laughs> It's real hard to see this, uh, this thing that they sent around. I think I've got it pulled up, but I can't. Is what's in the digital packet the same thing? I couldn't see the real one at all, but is it the same I've thing? I've got a map, if you'd like to see yeah. it, that shows yeah. the site distance and also is my letter to Katie from six weeks ago. Also, he's going to zoom in on that. On that um, yeah, it doesn't look like there's a... We're talking about something that's up there at the far top piece. It looks like it's halfway down, if that's what I'm trying to... What's that right there? There. And that's that's just a dimension line. This, okay, is, okay. this is the lot on the aerial and the layout that we're looking at. It shows the site distance. All right, here you go. Red. You want to pass this down? Sure. Yeah, that'd be great. It also shows the third page is the city requirement, which I think is 550 feet. I just have a question for staff, I guess. Is, I mean, did, when we measured it, did we measure from down where the, the, the level is, the elevation, where the elevation is today, or did we measure from up there? I mean, it's, if, it's, if it's as simple as what it sounds like, I mean, would, why wouldn't we have measured up from that area? Is it, is it a different? We did look at both elevations. Um, we just don't. There was. We just don't feel like that there would be a. It'd be a difficult situation, and this was made in conjunction with both Chris Griffith and Michelle Emerson. What so, is the change in elevation from uh, road to? It's about eight to ten feet right now. And then with when it's filled to some amount, is it going to come up some? When it's filled, we would design that driveway so there's only about a 2% grade off the Veterans Parkway. So in the first uh, 50 feet, it'd only drop a foot. And that grade level, how far into the lot would that be? I mean, that this 2% piece you're I'm talking about? I'm saying at least 50 feet. Okay. And so, and I'm not an engineer, but when y'all calculate these site distances, do you take into consideration the speed limit of the road? We do, and you'll see that when the packet comes around, uh, the city requirement has different site distance requirements based on the speed. So the higher the speed, the more site distance you need. 50 miles an hour is 550 feet. Okay. She knew that. I already knew that. Since Mr. Huddleston passed this around for me, I just thought I'd read do it. What's in her hand? So could I? I I'll ask maybe you this question uh, as far as any kind of a timing scenario here is is this is this time critical to have this done today yes it is now let me help you out of a jam here though because it's it's hard we understand when staff saying one thing and and uh a, another licensed professional saying another thing. We would like you to go ahead and approve this subject to staff comments like you always do and subject to me meeting with the uh, city infrastructure folks. She mentioned Chris Griffin and Michelle Emerson and of course Katie come out and whoever else. I think when we get out there on site they'll see that we're okay and if they say we're not then we won't be but I think if we go out on site they'll see that we're okay. Uh, so we'd like to ask you for approval, subject to that happening. So can I ask, just from a technicality standpoint, and this is really for you, your client's benefit is if we if we make the motion that way, and you know 
the next word we hear is staff ended up not being okay with it. Does that put you guys at the back of any line or should we? No, we'll just continue on hopefully with okay. the site plan that doesn't have it. But I think okay. when they're out there with me, they'll see that we're okay. If you're, if you're good with it, then I'm probably. I got a question. Yes. Bill, on this uh, picture, you, all right, there's another square um, closer to uh, West Lawn Boulevard. I didn't know what that represented. It's like it, it was also like another entryway. Yeah. Oh, Existing. I don't know what that is either. I think that may have been what Rick was asking about, that some easement or something. Okay. All right. Okay. Like All right. And are we saying right uh, across from where we're talking about this potential access that there is a guardrail in the center so there, there we would not have to worry about somebody trying to turn left across Veterans Parkway, right? Yeah. There's a guardrail? There's a guardrail on the side. On the right, yeah. coming from the bridge see that. To, the, to the property. So oh. You're coming out, you're seeing a guardrail right there, which she was mentioning. And is it divided? Huh? The guardrail. Yeah. The, yeah. The, the guardrails right. kind of up here. Okay. So we do. They could go they yeah, so we, then, then if we get to past this, then we will be into that other argument that we have is how do we keep them from trying to turn left? So. You'll be in the site plan. Um, and I, I think one thing that I want to clarify, mm -hmm. what we are, um, what, what the Planning Commission is, is determining is whether or not to put that note on the plat. I don't think that you are making a determination. Um, I don't think by, if you do not require that note, I don't think that you are giving them the green light to have access on the Veterans Parkway. That would still have to go through the site plan process and we would have to vet their design and their, and their access just like any other access point onto any other public street. So one thing that I don't want to give the applicants um, a, a uh, a false reading here is that if you approve it without that note on the plat, uh, you know they they still will have to go through the design process and show us that that access point um, is is safe and meets all requirements and that our public infrastructure staff staff will still need to to vet that along with Ms. Knoll. So I just wanted to make sure that everybody is on the same page that that the decision about the note on the plat is not a 100% certainty that access will be granted to Veterans Parkway. It's just saying we don't feel like that note is appropriate. I think that's what Bill was getting at, that you'd either work it out or you wouldn't. So, But I, I get what you're saying. But you guys feel strongly enough about it to put the note on there. If you put the note on there, so first of all, this is my... Uh, ignorance of this but is there is the note a standard it's it's a sentence we put on there and it's only that sentence or is it specific is it a custom note for each particular piece of property it would be customized to the particular situation so it would it would read something like lot one shall have no driveway access to veterans parkway and so if you approve it without that note then that note just doesn't get put on the plat and it gets recorded without the note if we approve it with the note can then there still be access to Veterans Parkway if, if they go through the process and make no. it happen and, and come back through and no. no. I, they, I think they'd that, have to amend the plat. Yeah, they have to amend the plat and, and Mr. Ives may may speak to this. It's my understanding from Tennessee case law that that a restriction on a plat is is equivalent to a restrictive covenant on the property. It would be, yes. That would be binding. Uh, and of course it can be amended and removed. Uh, I'll I'll make a comment and then I'm going to make a motion. Uh, so I think that we've got the backup process here to it, by the site plan approval of uh, if it's not going to get worked out that you, we wouldn't have the right in right out in the first place because we're going to have to see this at site plan. So I'm going to make a motion that we approve it without the note with the understanding that we'll see it at site plan and hopefully between the engineering and the city staff can work it out uh, at, at site plan. That's my motion. And subject to all staff comments and comments. Uh, and more comments. And, yeah. and verbal comments that were made. And I'll second that. 
have and do we have to say with the exception today. subject to all staff comments with the exception I mean, you've already stated and we're deleting the requirement no. for the note yeah all other Mr. staff Lance. yes thank you so if you guys bear with me just a minute is that um, so I think it sounded like the concern was the potential of the next owner. Right, that's why I was trying right? to. And so if if that is, I'm trying to think through why that's why that's a concern. Um, do we run into this where the next yes. owner comes in expecting to be able to have, and then they don't get it, and it blows up? And I mean, why, why would that ever happen if we already have the back door in place? I guess is part of why I'm getting to this is. If we already have the process in place to take care of those issues, why is it a concern? I guess that's kind of where I'm. I don't. I just don't know the answer to that. I, I think. I think it. The plat is a recorded document. It means it's of record. It means that any potential buyer who is who is looking at buying that lot, with the expectation that he may only buy that lot if if he's able to get access to Veterans Parkway, he's put on notice by that being on a recorded plat that 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 has been a, been made a condition of, of approval. In the process, will the study and discussion come that you guys have, that will come at the time that the sale is being contemplated or that the, that the actual development is actually happening? Or will, I mean, because this is our opportunity to put a note on the plat right now. You're either gonna go, y'all are gonna go and either work it out or not. And if, if, if you're not going through this process until a year from now, is, is that why you're leaning towards wanting the note on the plat? Uh, I think I think it's because um, you know when people buy property, they they don't always consult with us. We hope that they would, but they don't always do that. And um, and you know there's the old saying caveat emptor, um, but you know still it's this is um, our good faith effort to to put it on record. Um, you know the, the the minutes of the planning commission meeting and the agenda of the planning commission meeting. If if someone ha was resourceful enough, they could before they bought a piece of property, they may be able to dig into the minutes and the agenda and and see our concerns. But um, but not everybody is is that resourceful. So that, that you know we, we know that recording something is one way to make it public, make it accessible to um, and make it of record. To those who may wish to to know that kind of information. One more question. I'll shut up. Is, yeah. is it, do we ever put on a note on a plat that says we know at least it's going to be right in, right out only, <laughs> or is it just it's just either on the there's no access, or you're going to kind of think you got access. You see what I mean? Like, yeah. could we put something on there that says, hey, we we know at least this is going to be right in, right out. I feel like if we were to do, if we were to put a note saying it would be limited to write in, write out, then that would give yeah. the yeah. appearance that you that is it. almost a guarantee I mean, with, without the site plan. And just look, good old boy terms, I think we put a note on there that says, hey, we hadn't worked this out yet, but we know for sure at the best you're going to get write in, write out. If you buy it, you're on notice, you know, and that's it. It doesn't say you can't do it. But it doesn't say you can't either. I, I, I think that I that's obviously too vague. That kind open, of a soft or maybe plat note, I think, would be inappropriate because it doesn't tell anybody anything. I think the purpose of the plat note, if there is one, is to yeah. give somebody information. Yeah. Uh, and while it is true that if there is no note on this plat, a future, and if these folks don't go forward, it gets platted. Several years from now, if someone comes in and wants to build something, he's still going to be subject to the uh, the site plan process. But he may very well come in with an expectation, since there's no note on the plat, uh, the basic rule is you have access to public roads that adjoin your property. And he would, just looking at this without a note, would think that he would have access to both properties. Now, would the city be able to prevail that, no, you can't have it because of safety concerns? Possibly, but you, it would create a, a, a greater issue and a greater problem at that time. Um, so if, and I have no opinion on whether right in, right out's appropriate or not I, uh, at all, but uh, certainly a number of staff have looked at this and have a concern about it. Uh, and feel that 
public safety warrants that there not be a, an access onto uh, Veterans Park, Veterans Parkway. Uh, and I understand that the applicant feels he can do it safely. Hence, you get the big bucks for the making decisions. <laughs> I know Tom is of the essence and stuff, but we weren't even given the information from the other side. I would actually like to see this backed up and give Mr. Huddleston time to meet with the staff on the site and actually see the real thing before we make a decision. Because that way, if they meet and they don't come to a decision, we put it right back in front of us and put the thing on the, the deed. If they come to it and say, hey, we got it worked out, it's worked out. I, I would say we need to back this thing up and let's come to a, get a decision from all sides. Well, I would be in agreement. The, the concern I have is, is, well, one, for the future, for the applicant, but also for the future when we look at these plats, are we prepared to do this on every plat? Meaning every one that's a tight corner or that's within question, we would need to look at those and put notes on those plats or you're not fair to the rest of the... We, we do. We do. It, it, it is, and it's often... Um, Oftentimes, the developer and the engineer uh, don't disagree with what we require. So, and I can, under, I can understand their position that they want to advocate for their right of access on that property. But, but uh, you know, there are very few instances when we ask them to put a plat note restricting access onto a plat that 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 we get pushback against that. So, it, it is a practice that's that's relatively common, and that we've been doing for years. So in this particular case, since it was part of a different plat, this wasn't an issue because it wasn't a lot yet, correct? Correct. They're, they're creating the lot. It was, it was never recorded as a, as a lot of record, and so they're, they're um, attempting to record it on a plat to create it as a legal lot of record. Uh, Chair Jones. We were, yes. we were trying to keep it simple, and it got kind of complicated here in the last 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, what I propose is I, I, I can meet next week on site. I, I imagine Katie can. I imagine somebody with the infrastructure department can. And we'll meet on site, and we'll, they will decide if it's appropriate to have the note on there or if it's not. And whichever way they decide, we'll have the plat recorded and be done with it. So fair to you guys. Okay. But we can't make a motion like that. No. It has to come well, the motion would stay like oh, it is. Bill, what's it? Uh, let me ask this question: for, Can they bring this back up at the uh, whatever the first meeting is in in uh, April? April seventh meeting. So, Bill, what's is that? Uh, Basically, just defer it. It's not going to work. Or even the night, could, 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 could we do this? We've been pushed back. Go out of order and do it at the night meeting, April. I mean, uh, normally these are day meeting items, but. All right. That's the yeah, April. We could. Well, I think that. Go ahead, Law. Uh, Law's Bolden here, uh, Maples Commercial Real Estate. I represent the McDonald's in the transaction. Uh, we just want a simple subdivision plat. Uh, we just, the McDonald's, if I may speak, Mr. McDonald's here, he can speak for himself, but uh, uh, we, we just want to be able to convey the property to the buyers without harming them, the Floyd and Fonseca, and we're in a position now where we have to kind of sign off on something that harms them, and we think it's more appropriate that this be decided at a site plan level. We've been guessing about elevation, guessing about distance, and so forth. All that can be determined at the site plan uh, approval level, and uh, we respectfully request that we just get a simple one lot subdivision plat without the note. Uh, you can do whatever you want uh, when the site plan comes through. So, uh, I think the quandary here is, is kind of the chicken or the egg to a degree. So are you telling us that waiting till April, whatever the date is, is a problem? Well, well, well uh, you, you know, we started this, uh, well, <laughs> years ago, but realistically just with the subdivision plat probably back in December and, you know, through the holidays and COVID and all that, you know, we it, it's... We're at the point where we've got to get a subdivision plan. Note, no note, whatever you decide, we're going to have to go with it. 
So your answer to my question is you're not in a position to wait until the fir first no. week in April. Okay. No, sir. You've answered my question. And I will point out, you know, that, that, that we all found it kind of surprising when we got down to it that this wasn't a legal lot. Um, <clears throat> we had worked closely with the city on getting some sewer stuff straightened out. Of course, West Lawn Pud went bankrupt, uh, you know, some back in the collapse. And so uh, that left a mess. But and I, I don't know how it didn't get really recorded through that time period. But, uh, uh, you know, Veterans Parkway comes in, West Lawn goes in, the apartments go in. We were left with essentially nothing but a lot. You know, it really can't even be subdivided. And so really all we want is, is a legal lot, no notations. And, and we, we, we can come back and add the notation to the plat when it goes through site plan. Uh, at that point, uh, there's plenty of opportunity to analyze the situation and come up with an informed decision. So we just respectfully request that we get a plain old subdivision plat and a single lot subdivision plat with no no notation on it. So thank you. Any questions? We currently have a motion and a second. Somebody remember what those are right now? If it, if it doesn't, if this motion doesn't pass, I'm going to make a motion that we defer it till the next meeting. I'm just saying before I make my vote. And I know they don't want to wait two weeks, but I. I, I don't think I've got enough information right now. Just yeah, honestly, I, I agree with I don't, I'm not sure I'm willing to step out on some limb and say I'm okay with some safety concern that staff has. Is my without making sure I understand everything about it. I, I, I'm. I'd rather go two weeks than than to do something to back the applicant up way farther than two weeks potentially, or or to go against staff. So that's just I don't know. I agree with Rick. And I guess I feel like it's less about backing the applicant up as it is there's a situation here where it can be evaluated together by the team um, and, and there's still control over the city being able to say they don't want the note on there. Yeah, I just, I, I'm just trying to find a compromise here. I, it, it, of course, I got to get my head around this. The, it, the best way I can understand it, uh, knowing that if they met and the city wasn't for it, our, from a planning commission standpoint and a planning staff perspective, our hesitancy of going ahead and not requiring the note to be on there is that if there was a future buyer that future buyer would not know that, yeah, that they've got a site plan, but they wouldn't know that there's a possibility that, they're, that they wouldn't have access to Veterans Parkway. So that would be up to the seller to convey that that issue is there. Um, and it sounds like that this closing is going to happen soon, or, or they would be able to um, they would be able to wait. Um, I have all the confidence in the world that the seller will convey this fact. This we, we beat it to death. No, I shouldn't say it that way. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna I'm moving forward with my motion. So your motion was to. Um, Approve, uh, approve the note. with all staff comments, with the exception of you were not requiring the note. Right. And Jennifer seconded. Correct. One more question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I probably got one more too. So, all right. Yeah. So, and this, and this is for Matt. If you look at the process we're following today with asking for the note, is that the normal process we follow? Yes. So this timing of this would be exactly the same 
Yes, if we, if during, during the subdivision plat review process, if we identify a lot that we feel, um, you know, based on safety, engineering standards, uh, what have you, needs to have restricted access. Now, I'm, I mean, I'm sure that there are some that when we review a plat, I'm sure that there are some that we miss because of human error, but if we identify one during the platting process, um, then, then, then we require that note be put on there. And, that's, and that goes whether it's a commercial lot or a residential lot. Um, you know, there are numerous residential subdivisions when we have lots that are, um, uh, you know, for example, if we have a residential lot that fronts, that's a corner lot that fronts on kind of a major arterial or a collector street, and then the side street is a local street, and we don't want the driveway access onto, onto the major road, then we will restrict the access to the side street, so that way when the, the builder comes in to pull his permit or the, um, uh, you know, it puts everyone on notice, it puts our staff on notice who, who may not have been involved in the review of the subdivision plat, it puts the builder on notice that he has to have his access on the side street. Um, so, uh, yes, it, it is consistent with, with our past practice. One more question, sorry. Mm. Can we, as the city, go back and put a note on this later? I mean, can we adjust, can we amend the plat a month from now? If, if we let this go right now with no note, and then you guys get together and decide, because you guys getting together is just deciding whether or not the current owners are going to be able to get their ingress and egress out to veterans, correct? It's not about whether or not there's going to be a note. We're making that decision right now, or are y'all going to get together and make the decision about whether or not there's going to be a note on the plat? No, I think, I think the, that, the, that is the decision. The, the, the issue at hand the is, the, right. is the note. So if, if you guys get together and decide there needs to be a note, there's going to be a note? Well, that's where we are today. That's what happened more than two Staff has decided that we should have a note and is recommending that to Planning Commission. Yes, and Planning Commission can say yes or no, uh, but that staff's recommendation and request is that there be a note on the plat. But his question is, is if we do it without the note, can staff come back to say in a month from now or two weeks from now and say we, we couldn't we couldn't. We're coming to a conclusion that a note needs to be on there, so we're going to. We're asking you to add the note. No, I don't know of any way we could do that because it'll be a recorded document, and we would be changing a recorded document uh, if we wanted to. We could ask them to agree to amend it, uh, which, in this circumstance, I'd say they probably would not want to do. Uh, you know, the site plan review can be an issue, but in terms of changing the plat, that takes all the people who signed the plat which is going to be the owners, electric, water, sewer, and planning commission at least, uh, by the planning secretary, would have to sign the amended plat. We can't just go put something on someone's plat. Well, we're saying we won't record it until we have this meeting, and if, if staff still says in the meeting you need to have the note, we'll have the note on the plat. You can make well, my question subject then. to that like you do all the other. So, so my comments. question then is, if, if that is the case, then why is this an issue for us right now? Because you guys can meet and you don't need us to, put, to record a plat. Well, I, think, I think it's the issue because is that, is that they have um, decided that, so, so the history of this plat is that we reviewed it administratively and um, one of our administrative conditions was that, was that we wanted to see that note on the plat. They, um, you know, which was their right, they said that they did not want to comply with that condition. And then we said, okay, well, then we will deny the administrative approval of your plat and your next step will be to refile and we'll take it to planning commission. So I think if uh, uh, it, it's where they have decided that they did not want to comply with one of our conditions and they, they have not indicated to, to me. I no, I agree. I agree with you there. I'm just saying right now, if we pull it and he's saying he's going to put it on the plat if you deny, you don't need us. Yeah, I think based, based upon what he's saying, I think the, the approval could be structured, structured in such a way that upon, uh, if, if they agree to this, if upon further study and consultation between the design team and staff, if they agree that, that uh, 
Uh, to put the note on there, if staff still is of the opinion that the note needs to go on there, I think that we are that, that we are um, we're fine with that with that approach. All right. Is that are you comfortable with the way that that, your, that was the way your motion was? Absolutely. Okay. I, my my I think part of my confusion is whether or not their discussion is going to be making the discussion of having the note added to the plat, or their discussion is having the decision made whether or not they're going to have ingress or egress. Period. With them as the owner. You see what I mean? I do. That's the difference that I don't they see. I thought your motion was. They're going to get together and decide whether or not they can have access. We're going to add the note if if, if uh, infrastructure still says yeah. that they don't agree with allowing access. We'll add the note before we record it, and then you don't have to worry about the amendment plan or anything. Okay. Are you comfortable that his motion says that and that that's all good, legit, easy? Uh, well, I'm comfortable with Bill's statement, but the motion would say we don't have to put the note on. All right. Well, let me let me. I'll withdraw my motion then. <laughs> okay. I'll withdraw my motion. <laughs> I think Ms. Garland would need to withdraw her second if she should, if she so chooses. I will do that as well. And so my motion will be, and I'm not going to rephrase it, but what Matthew just said. <laughs> <laughs> would you let me to, to restate that for the record? Yes. Please. Okay. So the motion would be to approve the, the plat subject to staff comments with the modification to the staff comment regarding the plat note pertaining to access on the Veterans Parkway to be that that staff will um, meet and consult with the applicant and his design team um, and study that issue further, um, including meeting the applicant and the design team on site. And if staff um, still deter makes the determination that that plat note is needed to restrict access to Veterans Parkway, um, that that plat note will be on there. Ms. Jaco, did you get all that? Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank goodness for, re for recording. <laughs> right. It is recording. It's recording. Yeah, it's recording right? <laughs> <laughs> I will second. <laughs> and, and that the plat will not be recorded until this yeah, yeah. until this issue is worked out. Uh, so moved, right? <laughs> yeah. So moved. And we have a second. Yeah. Any further discussion? We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now we're moving on to new business. First item there is a zoning application for approximately 0.66 acres located along Lee Street to be rezoned from CMR and CCO to PRD and CCO. Lee Street Partnership is the applicant. And Ms. Kerr. Thank you, Chair Jones, members of the Planning Commission. This subject property is located along the west side of Lee Street, north of Jackson Street, and south of Forest Street. The property consists of one parcel totaling 0.66 acres and is identified as 617 Lee Street. The parcel is currently developed with single family dwelling and is zoned CMR, which is commercial medical residential. The applicant wishes to rezone the properties to planned residential development. The proposed PRD would be consistent of 17, a seven unit townhome, I'm sorry, there's seven unit townhome development called Lee Street uh, Town PRD. The proposed gross density would be 10.6 dwelling units per acre. The subject property is also located within the CCO overlay district. The adjacent zoning to the north and east and south is CMR, Commercial Medical District. The property to the west is zoned RS8, Single Family Residential District. And the surrounding land uses are primarily single family dwellings. The proposed development would include a type A landscape buffer with a six foot vinyl white fence along the north south and west property lines adjacent to single family residential uses. The development would have direct access on Lee Street. Okay. 
and it would include two buildings with two-story townhome units. Each of the three units facing Lee Street will be three bedroom units having rear entry, one car garages, and a small front yard with a decorative fence. The four units in the rear of the development <coughs> will each have three bedrooms, a rear patio, front entry garages, and a, a larger backyard. The seven units will have at least one surface parking space. Garage parking for the development is required to meet the minimum parking requirements. The development includes four surface parking spots for guests. The primary exterior materials will be brick and cement to siding. The minimum building setbacks for the development would be nine feet on the front along Lee Street. 10 feet side setbacks and an 18 foot rear setback abutting the RS8 uh, residential district to the west. The pattern book states that development will include approximately 41% of the total lot as open space. The site is required to contain 5% formal open space. The applicant is proposing 5.8% open space. The two formal open space areas are proposed to be internal to the site. Also included in this is a courtyard seating with a paver patio, a fire pit, enhanced by a landscaped area with the uh, open space grass area and benches along the entryway uh, sidewalk. Following exceptions to the RSA Type 3 zoning regulations with the CCO overlay uh, are to be a front setback to be 9 foot along Lee Street as opposed to the 18 foot setback required by the CCO regulations and that's based on the average of the distance of the homes on the same block face. The rear setback is to be 18 foot instead of the 20 foot, which is according to the zoning ordinance chart two. A reduction in the required 18 inch step up at the front elevation to be a six inch step. The RSA type three townhomes are required to have a minimum finished floor elevation of 18 inches above grade when the front setback is less than 30. And that's per the chart two in notes section of the zoning ordinance. An exception to allow a type A buffer with a privacy fence in lieu of a type D buffer on the property lines adjacent to single family residentials and that's toward that is uh, in table two of the buffer requirements in the zoning ordinance. The future land use map contained in the Murfreesboro 2035 comprehensive plan recommends that the subject property be developed with a suburban residential land use character. This classification in intends to serve as a transition from urban to rural residential development as predominantly located along the peripheral of the city. The comprehensive plan calls out RS-15, RS-12, and RS-10 as existing zoning districts that are compatible with this designation. 2.0 to 3.54 dwelling units per acre is the recommended density. While single family attached residential uses is consistent with the residential land use character, the more intense single family residential attached use that is proposed at 10.6 dwelling units per acre is not consistent with the vision for the suburban residential land use character. This is an instance where the planning commission will need to determine whether it's appropriate to deviate from the recommendation of the future land use map. The North Highland Avenue study, planning study was adopted by the Murfreesboro Planning Commission on March 22, 2017. The primary goal is to present possible land use patterns and development scenarios and implementation strategies that were, will create a plan for future growth, create a positive sense of place, connect the surrounding community and its positive historic elements, and increase in economic vitality. This, this development area in the North Highland study area is recommended to develop consistent with the mixed residential neighborhood land use character. This classification recommends up to four units attached residential buildings, sidewalks, street trees, and may have shallow street setbacks consistent with the predominant character of the area. Building design details, street facing facades, emphasis on low fencing along the street, and parking located at the rear of the development units 
and maximum height of 2.5 stories. This zoning request is generally consistent with the study as it emulates the purpose of the North Highland study area through design character to help preserve the quality of life in the area. Staff is supportive of this zoning request, including the deviation, deviation from the future land use map. The proposed residential land use will be compatible with the surrounding residential land uses. Compact dense development is desirable in and around downtown and promotes walkability. The proposed development will contribute to the vitality and quality of life of the area, continuing a positive trend towards reinvestment in the area. The zoning request is generally consistent with the recommendations of the North Highland Avenue planning study. Um, Applicant is available to make a presentation regarding the proposed amendment and to answer questions. After that, the Planning Commission will need to discuss the zoning amendment and schedule it for a public hearing. Okay, thank you, Ms. Kerr. Thank you, Amelia. Chairman Jones, Commission, Planning Commissioners, my name is Clyde Round for the Holston Steel Engineering. I'm representing um, the Lee Street Partnership, of which Brian Burns is a part. So after my presentation, if you'd like to speak to Brian, he's available uh, as well. May did a great job just kind of doing an overview for the project. And, and just to reiterate, um, Mr. Burns has been committed to trying to bring an emphasis on restoration in the downtown area. This is a project that's very consistent with these fine uh, villas that he's doing on, on Vine Street, where there's three properties in the front, four properties in the back. So if you want to see a sample of what we're looking for in this project, it's probably a great example at East Vine Street. As was mentioned, um, we are trying to take advantage of the emphasis on the North Highland study for revitalization in this area, and that mixed use characteristics are encouraged in this area. We're also taking advantage of the CCO as far as the density requirements and the, uh, the alleviation from the sewer requirement that's typical with a lot of developments outside the CCO. So there's two different kind of studies that are helping us in this particular situation to allow for more density. With that in mind, just the adjacent zoning is RS8, so we are up against the map <coughs> zoning, which is a little bit larger lots, of course. Infrastructure is in place on Lee Street, so that won't be an issue. As far as overall topography, the site's generally flat, and that's just of note. But we want to bring to your attention that it is an info project. As you're going to see with a lot of the emphasis on the CCO, we're just seeing we're taking homes down and bringing new homes up. A lot of those homes are coming in as, as attached homes. This is no different than a lot of what we're seeing go on in CCO. We are removing one house. I just want to show you that house. The house is in the top two. The top picture in the left-hand corner is, um, is the house that's being removed. It's pretty recessed on the site. It's a large site, almost one acre, but it's 0.66 acres. That house will be taken down. The image also on the left side is another view of the same house. The two images on the right side of the house is across the street, so you can kind of see the character of what we're going into. Um, this area is an area that transitioning to a newer home will probably catalyze some positive things in the neighborhood. So we're excited about bringing our potential home to this area. The two homes on the top pictures are the homes that are adjacent to this property. The buffer will basically screen these two homes from site. And the two lower pictures are just the character of the street. We want to make sure you see the, the relative density that we're working within. Definitely an older neighborhood, definitely an, a neighborhood in need of revitalization. Um, as far as the site plan is concerned, I uh, made a great job just describing that. The three homes on the front, uh, just one thing to mention, uh, also highlighted in the Highland study, is that the front will have, they won't be courtyards per se where there's like a courtyard wall, but there'll be low decorative fences that kind of give you the illusion of a little courtyard in the front. And that'll be green space. We didn't count our green space requirements, but that'll be something that the owners of those homes can utilize on the front of their property towards Lee Street. As I may have mentioned, all the homes on the front are rear entry single car garages. All the homes on the back are front entry garages. That's consistent with what was approved at East Vine Street. The green space, um, this is a little bit of a strategy on, on Brian's part from a design standpoint. We're trying to bring the formal green space to the internal of the site. And that's primarily because as we go into areas that are a little bit more transitional, 
it provides a little bit more security for those who are living in the development to have their green space rather than be on Lee Street, more internal to the property. Also, on the rears of the back units, they'll have a, a, a basically a covered, not a covered porch, but a, a concrete porch with partitions between. So they'll have some formal or well, informal space of their own on the rear of their property. So between the formal open space, the front yards and the front units, the backyards and the back units, um, it, we feel like livability in this community is going to be very, very nice. As was mentioned by me, there are four guest spaces. They're central to the development. They basically, if you see that formal green space, that's that, those four little dashed lines that are between that and the mail kiosk. That is the guest parking. We have a parking ratio in general, three units per, per unit. Again, there are four guest spaces, but there's three units per, three parking spaces per unit where the CC only requires two. So on this site, we feel like we're, we're amply parked, if not over parked, but we know guest parking is important for the strategy of both the staff and the commissioner, so we want to make sure that's provided for. The mail kiosk, as mentioned, is that little black dot that's on the center, kind of the center formal green space there. And uh, overall, uh, we did have some pretty uh, strong modifications on the architecture. Uh, Mr. Burns originally uh, had a more contemporary looking architecture uh, after meeting with staff and really kind of consult in the Highland study. The Highland study, concerned, it, it's much more of a craftsman style kind of emphasis as far as the residential component of the Highland study. So we feel like we made some appropriate adjustments to make sure that we were respecting the study that was done. And Mr. Burns was very responsive to that. There are three bedroom units, as Amelia mentioned. As far as the landscaping, we are asking for a reduction in the buffer type from a type D to a type A with a six foot privacy fence. Uh, that just, uh, just, it allows us, the, Brian would like the privacy fence just for more of a security basis for the property. Um, as far as the overall buffer, we feel like a type A will more than satisfy the concerns of, of screening our development from the neighbors. The amenities, as was mentioned, the center portion, that large green space in the center dash with a red dash around it, that is the fire pit area and the green lawn area, that is our formal open space, the larger one. The smaller one is a smaller dashed area that's on the right side of the driveway. That's basically consists of some landscaping and two benches, more passive seating. On the type right corner, you see a picture of a low fence. That's the fence we're projecting for, to create the courtyard element to the front of these units and then a little image of the mail kiosk itself. But there also, the staff has asked us to put some sort of a, a visual partition screen around the polycart storage area. These homes will have the storage of the polycarts inside the garages. On garbage day, we provide an area that they'd roll it out to a certain location, concentrate all the garbage in one place, and then we'd have that screened. So that was a, an add to the project that came a little bit later in the process. With that in mind, we're excited about bringing new construction into an area that needs revitalization. Um, Mr. Burns, as I mentioned, was committed to that process. If you have any questions for me specifically about Lee Street, I'd love to answer this. If you have any questions specifically for Mr. Burns, he is available. But thank you for the opportunity to briefly present Lee Street townhomes. So, Clyde, the trash is going to go in the um, in this carve out section. Uh, I don't. I, I don't see. And just more. on Trash Day. It's so on south on the south side. Yes, sir. The so, I'm sorry. is it a truck like the city has, or I, I'm just trying to figure out how it's going to get in and out of there? Are we private hauling this one, Brian? Yeah, we're we're private haulers, Ken, on this one. The garages are deep enough that he, he allowed space for them to be stored inside the garage, but on that particular day when the private haulers come in, on some of our other projects, we have a way that they can get to the units themselves, but if they're in the garage, we need to have a place on that day to store them rather than just to come out in the front of the driveway. So this is basically a holding area on their garbage day. Right. But is a private hauler, uh, is it a big truck or is it? I don't mean to be. A pickup truck or yeah, is a it a major garbage truck? Most, garbage. Most of the private haul companies are smaller trucks. Okay. Not big city trucks that have the arms and stuff out. Okay. And a lot of private haulers, you can pull it to the edge of your driveway and they'll actually empty out your driveway. So the, the cart area may not even be used at all. So what you're saying is, is the turning radius of this thing is not going to be a problem for them to pick it up and get out. They're not going to be backing out onto Lee Street. No. Okay. And when you're, you said that each of the units has three parking spaces, and that means you're counting the guest spaces. For Chairman Jones, just on average, yes, but those on, four on in average, the center, okay. 
are allocated towards specifically towards mm -hmm. guests. And just the things that I was kind of catching right there while you were talking about it. Uh, type D buffer, you're requesting a type A buffer. With a fence. Mm -hmm. Right. These are just some of my Excuse me? things I'm just bringing up that might be further discussion Absolutely. Uh, at a later time. Still worried about the parking being stacked. Uh, I love the, you know, you've got a garage. I know you're doing what you can with a small space, but I do worry about how they, how they actually, you know, how that works on a daily basis when you've got two cars stacked and really no other room. I just can see them possibly end up parking up and down that drive in and out. Uh, on the south side. Chairman Jones, they're stacked. There's four of them that are stacked. The ones on the ends on the back are not stacked. They are stacked, but there's also an adjacent parking lot, parking space to the one that's stacked. On, on the three on ends? On the three ends. Yeah, it's just the, the ones in the center. are stacked. Correct. Mm -hmm. Comments, questions? And we need to set a public hearing, and I take it you all are looking at April? We, we, that'd be great. April 7th will be our 7th. public hearing date. Any other Can feedback we, for them moving forward before we get to public hearing? <laughs> Mr. Lance is Sorry. having trouble with yeah. his uh, computer. Chair Jones, Mr. Burns asked that we can go to the following meeting. He's going to be out of town on the on the 7th of April. I think that's spring break week, if I'm not mistaken. So. Okay, so that would be May. Spring break week is, is the week of uh, March 29th or April 2nd, so it's the week before. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, okay. Okay, I'm good then. Okay, April 5th is good. <laughs> You'll be back. Thank you, Matthew. It's funny, I wouldn't have known that before a few years. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so we're back on April 7th? Yes, sir. If we get a motion as such, yes. Any other comments, concerns for them regarding regarding this project? And if not, we're ready for a motion. All right. well, we set a public hearing for April seven. Seven. Mm -hmm. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor, please state aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, next we have a zoning application to amend the one East College PUD zoning for approximately 2.42 acres located along East College Street, North Spring Street, East Lytle Street, and North Church Street, 705 Fourth Avenue South Holding Company, LLC, is the applicant. Ms. Kerr. Thank you again, Chair Jones, members of the Planning Commission. The applicant, 705 Fourth Avenue South Holding Company, is requesting to amend one East College PUD located at the 100 block of East College Street and North Spring Street to allow modifications to the site, building design, and uses. The property is approximately 2.42 acres and is the former location of the United Methodist Church and Franklin Synergy Bank. The One East College PUD was originally approved on May 21, 2020. The applicant is requesting an amendment to the PUD to modify building uses, exterior materials and designs of the building, parking, amenities and sitting of the structures. The building setback will remain the same. The approved PUD consists of a mix of uses including a hotel, residential living, office, retail, res uh, restaurant, uh, parking garage, police precinct, and refurbishing of the existing church sanctuary and bell tower. The overall residential square feet of the appro approved plan is 185,634 square feet and a density per acre is 64.46 with 156 residential dwelling units. The amendment to the PUD to that site. Ms. Carr, did you say 146 dwelling units? One four six? 156 dwelling 56. units. Okay. 
The amendment to the PUD would propose that the South Church Street and East Lytle building, which is this building over here on North, North Church, it's supposed to be North Church and East Lytle, um, that building is 46,934 square foot floor area. It's to be four story mixed use building with 10,144 square feet of retail space on the first floor. And the upper three floors would have 36,790 square foot floor area and consists of 32 residential dwelling units. The overall height of the North Church Street and East Lytle building would be 55 feet 6 inches. The amendment also includes the conversion of the previous hotel with 62,410 square feet of floor area into a four-story mixed-use building along East College Street. Within that, it would come comprise of 30,564 square feet of office and retail on the first two floors, and then including an office precinct on the, on the street level, and uh, it would also consist of 31,846 square feet of floor area on the third and fourth floors with 36 residential dwelling units. The overall height of the East College building will be 68 feet. The four-story building apartment fronting North Spring Street and East Lytle Street will consist of 10,300, I'm sorry, 100,344 square feet of floor area with 95 residential dwelling units. The overall height of the North Spring Street and East Lytle Street building is 55 feet 6 inches. The proposed parking garage is eight stories above grade and consists of 490 required parking spaces, which does include a 25% reduction for shared parking. It also includes 200 dedicated parking, non-dedicated parking spaces. Proposed above the parking garage would be two or possibly three stories of additional 35,448 square feet of floor area to be 28 residential condo units. The overall height of the parking garage condo building is 148 feet. Combined residential dwelling units within the development would contain 191 studio, one bedroom, and two bedroom dwelling units with a total square footage of 210,000 square feet of, uh, and a density of 78.93 units per acre. The proposed residential amenities for the development would include a fitness center and a private courtyard with a pool and sun deck. Amenities would also include a gated promenade area with green space and grilling and seating for residents adjacent to a gated dog, dog park. And the proposed plan would also include a rooftop plaza as an exclusive amenity for the condo units. The development will provide two pedestrian entrances, one on um, East College Street as well as one on North Church Street. It will also provide one vehicular entrance off of the East Lytle Street. The proposed amendment has designated 260 2,640 square foot of space to a rooftop restaurant or bar that would be located on the eighth floor of the parking garage. In order to include the restaurant component to, the, to this project, the lease must be completed by May 30th, 2021. The total building area proposed is 433,131 square feet. The uh, exceptions to the standard zoning regulations are to be 35% of the required 490 parking spaces, to be compact spaces 7 feet 6 inches wide, and the remainder to be 8 foot 6 inches wide, as opposed to the 9 foot wide spaces required by the zoning ordinance. Maximum building height is to be 148 foot instead of the maximum overall height in the CBD of 75 feet. The subject property is surrounded to the south and west with the CBD, or Central Business District, with multiple businesses, offices, restaurants, and the Center for the Arts. Properties to the north and east are zoned OGR. To the north consists of a mixture of residential uses and small businesses, and to the east are small businesses and a location of First Presbyterian Church. 
The Rutherford County Judicial Building lies to the northwest and is zoned PND, which is Planned Institutional District. And the southeast corner adjacent to the subject property is zoned Commercial Highway District. The future land use map recommends the downtown mixed use central business district is the most appropriate land use character for the subject property. Compatible zoning, the existing zoning districts are CBD, the mixed use, and a planned unit development. Examples of development types in the downtown mixed use central business district land use character include an active mix of concentration of uses, public gathering and event spaces in a main street setting. Recommended allowable uses include multifamily residential uses, entertainment, restaurants, department stores, and other retail and general professional offices and hotels. This land use character is also characterized by streets and other public spaces framed by buildings with zero to minimal front setbacks, creating an architecture enclosure. It is staff's opinion that the proposed rec zoning request is consistent with the recommendations of the future land use map of the Murfreesboro 2035 Comprehensive Plan. The North Highland Avenue st planning study was adopted by the Murfreesboro Planning Commission on March 22, 2017. The primary goal of the study is to present possible land use patterns and development scenarios and implementation strategies that will create a plan for future growth, create a positive sense of place, connect to the surrounding community and its positive historic elements, and increase e economic vitality. The proposed uh, PUD emulates the purpose of the North Highland Avenue study area through economic growth, preservation of community character through design, infrastructure, parking, and streetscape design to help increase future growth in the area. The study of the land use map recommends that the subject property developed is consistent with the downtown central business district land use character. Um, Planning Commission will need to discuss this item. The applicants are here to give a presentation and then a public hearing will need to be set. Staff recommends April the 7th. Thank you, Ms. Kerr. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Amelia. Um, I may need to pay her for doing my presentation for me, so um, I'm not sure I can add a lot to that, but uh, I do have the architects as well as the owner and Mr. Harney uh, here to represent the project. We can't answer any questions. I think page 16 is probably where uh, will be the most useful page for you to look in the book. That outlines the changes um, in text for all the numbers that Ms. Kerr went over. It also has both the site plans, both the previously approved and the proposed uh, listed there. The main change, I think the council members may remember um, when this came through at the council, I think it was the first public or in-person meeting after COVID started, so it was last April or May. Uh, I think we said then we expected to come back with a change due to the uh, hotel uh, elimination, and that's the main change here. It is, uh, and, and it dominoed around the site. So we've been, spent the last 10 months or so coming up with a plan that is uh, viable in today's market and so we uh, eliminated the hotel that was along College Street we took the office and retail building that was along North Church and we really um, split that area between not only Co North Church but as well as College to activate both of those street frontages and then we increased the amount of residential um, and then we also gained on street parking. Uh, that's mainly due to uh, increasing spaces along College Street because before most of that was taken up by the drop off for the hotel itself. So we added spaces in lieu of that drop off. Uh, a couple of key things, uh, Ms. Kerr hit on a few, is we've added a space about 2,600 uh, square feet um, on top of the garage roof that would allow for a restaurant, a rooftop restaurant space. I think that'd be special something we've talked about for a long time in downtown just never had it come to fruition we've added space for that um, in addition we have kept the commitment to keeping the church it's obviously a strong uh, component of both plans and all the city's desires and wishes before the sale of this property that uh, commitment stays in place uh, we did add a pool that was an amenity that was not here previously 
and uh, I would encourage you to look through the architecture. I think you'll find that it still reads the same. It's the same style, quality, character. It's just shifted around a little bit. So uh, the height of the building is relatively the same. And uh, the parking uh, the parking did go down, but that's only because our demand went down. And so uh, we use the same equations, the same variables from before. Just the number uh, required is what we took it down. So. Uh, outside of that, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Uh, I believe I hit all the main talking points. Uh, well, one other thing um, is we have designed the residential units that front in the building along college that they are all one bedroom and studios. So if they, uh, if the opportunity arises, those could be converted into a boutique hotel in the future uh, if that opportunity arises. So we have preserved that ability. So how many? Uh bedrooms is that it's about 36 uh total units right okay. there so it would be a relatively small boutique and so it would be the definition of boutique i would say right so um a million and i may have misunderstood a comment but i thought i heard that the rooftop bar was or rooftop restaurant was contingent upon a lease in 22? So that is a component that we have to have nailed down before we start construction. Uh, obviously this is a very unique structure, the way it's going to be built, the way it's going to be put together. And so before we start construction, we've got to have a good firm lease there that we know somebody's going to take that so we know how to basically build that space. And if you don't, what happens? It, it, just, it doesn't get built. It's just going to be flat and nothing there? Right, nothing it'd there. just be the parking garage. Garage. Okay. I will say that we've already got a very promising lead. Uh, can't say who, but we do have a very promising lead on somebody to take that space. So we're very optimistic about that. Or we wouldn't have put it in the plan. Yeah. And it's on the rooftop or the eighth floor? It's on top of the parking garage, which would be approximately the eighth floor. Then the, there's uh, additional floors of residential above that. Not on top of the restaurant, but on top of the garage is where the other residential would be. Very exciting. Mr. Taylor, can you yes, tell me um, as far as like the if we look at the just the density numbers on here, if we'd have counted the hotel rooms as units, yes, sir. Wh where were we, and what are we going to approximately? I mean, do so you we had a we had about 266. If we'd counted the hotel as residential previously, we had about 266 total. Now we've got 191 total, and so it's it's a decrease. Matt, just uh, this is a curiosity question. So the the height of this thing, well, I guess at, at the highest point is 148 feet. Yes, sir. If you had to guess, what do you think the courthouse is? Oh, it was about it was within a few feet of that. I, okay. Plus or minus ten, I would okay. say. Okay. All so, right. That just gives me a scale. And I, I believe the courthouse, as far as existing ground, where it starts, sets a little higher than what this site does. I'm so with you. I think end of the day, um, they're relatively the same overall elevation at okay. the top. Any other questions or comments? And if not, we need a motion for a public hearing. April 7th is what you're Yes, ma'am. So moved. Thank you. I'll second. Motion and a second. All in favor, please state aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. All right. Now, next, we move on to staff reports and other business. And I've been told that we do have one item of staff reports and other business. Um, we have a zoning application for approximately 169.4 acres located along Veterans Parkway, south of Burnt Knob Road, west of Blackman Road, and north of Vaughn Road to be zoned GDO1. That will be 52.7 acres. 
GDO 3, which would be 116.7 acres, and rezone from P for part to CH, commercial highway, 101.7 acres. The city administration department is the applicant. Ms. Green, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you, Chairman Jones and Planning Commission members. I've been asked on behalf of the administration to prepare a staff report and present an item of other business to you this afternoon for a zoning map amendment application which we've received. As you mentioned, it's for rather large properties located along Veterans Parkway, Burnt Knob Road, Vaughn Road, and Blackman Road. On your desk should be um, the report that I prepared for you this morning, which outlines some of the additional information on what I'm going to go over with you today. Um, the properties do consist of six parcels. And I, I failed to, know, to let the screen know. I didn't load it on the, on the agenda. Okay. Thank you. Um, the subject area is does consist of six separate parcels. One in the largest is owned by the city of Murfreesboro, and it is the area that zoned park on the maps that you have. It was zoned park in anticipation of a 123-acre West Park, which the council uh, had hired Kimley Horn to prepare a, a plan for. Since the time that that plan was considered by city council, the vision for this property by our administration department, city council has changed and they are looking to um, allow this property to develop with commercial type uses as opposed to reserving the property for park. There is a portion of the property, about 15 acres, that they're asking for it to remain zoned park. And then the request is to change the base zoning from park to commercial highway district. I prepared the report um, as one for you, but in the end I'll ask you to schedule two separate public hearings just as a matter of information. The, um, the other five property owners were added by the volition of the city's administration department, meaning they were not requested by the property owners. It's my understanding that Mr. Huddleston's going to do an outreach effort to contact them and notify them of the request and what is being proposed to change prior to the public hearing. The majority of the adjacent surrounding land use is either suburban or ex-urban residential developments. You're probably familiar with a Rogers Group Rock Quarry that's nearby and of course the developing Shelton Square PRD which is somewhat close to the property as well. I believe the city's administration department recognizes that the gateway design overlay district created over 17 years ago has proven to be a robust and vibrant economic base. It creates a strong sense of identity because of the emphasis we've placed on high quality design. It has significantly increased property values in Murfreesboro. Um, and the GDO was able to create Class A office space which did not exist prior to its creation in 2004. I think their desire is to capture some of the successes that the GDO has had and apply it to this property. And I think that that's the reason why they're asking for GDO 1 and 3 to be placed on several properties here. I did provide a list of the zoning ordinance, um, does outline the 12 purposes of the GDO and I've provided them for you to read and I'll probably go over them at the public hearing but um, just have them for you for reference tonight. The CH zoning, the rezoning the property to CH is only for the city's property. The other properties are um, just at being requested to be included in the overlay district. The future land use map actually anticipated this properties be have a land use classification of business park. And if you read our um, comprehensive plan and look at the descriptions, business park is not what you might think of in the 90s where industrial boards created business parks and there were uh, various types of industrial uses. But it was really, I think, envisioning something similar to what's being proposed. The, the development types proposed in the business park designation were primarily office, medical, and technology slash research uses, higher density auto urban residential uses, so that would be RS6, townhomes, RS10, RS8, public institutional and common green spaces. So it sounds like, and of course I'm not very familiar with the intentions of this property, but it sounds like the vision for the property is in line with the future land use map, although it is um, very different from the discussions we've had with this property being a park. It is a, a big change to go from park to development, but um, it, it is in line with the future land use map. I did in the recommendation bullet three different areas that you'd be considering tonight. Rezoning 52.7 acres to GDO 1, rezoning 116.7 acres to GDO 3, and rezoning 101.7 acres from park to CH. Um, and 
and bringing it up under other business because it, uh, Mr. Huddleston had requested that we do that today and ask you to schedule it for a public hearing on April 7th. So this is um, a little untraditional of a timeline, but it's we're pushing forward with an abbreviated schedule if you are amenable to it. Of course, it's your decision on when to hold the public hearing. But they're asking to push forward with that timeline because they're hoping that um, zoning the property so that development is an entitled use would entice development as opposed to people looking at the property thinking, oh yeah, it's a great property, but then I have to go through a city's legislative process. Um, not all communities, I think, are as well run as Murfreesboro. I don't think that all the boards and commissions work as well together as ours. So nationally, there's not always a, um, it's, it's not always perceived positively when you have to go through a legislative change. And so I think that the administration department's asking for you to kind of look at it, consider it, make a recommendation prior to having somebody come to you because it would make the land more attractive to whomever they are courting. The, um, of course I've included maps and the, um, the uh, application. I mentioned Mr. Blomley actually prefers that you schedule two separate public hearings for basically the same area. One, just to consider the city's property, and a second to consider the properties, the five other properties not owned by the city. And I think that's an anticipation that if there are concerns with the zoning change that Mr. Huddleston discovers in his uh, due diligence these next three weeks that it doesn't stop the city's rezoning application from moving forward. It can move forward independently. While the other one, maybe additional information needs to be had, or maybe you don't think it's a good idea, or maybe council doesn't think it's a good idea. So Mr. Blomley has requested those two separate public hearings on the evening of April 7th. Um, do you have any questions? So I have a curiosity question. Um, based upon, and you may not be able to answer this, but based upon the request of the zoning that, that you all have put together, do you have a developer in mind? I absolutely have no idea. Okay. But I am confident that um, Mr. Huddleston thinks it fits. Okay. He's got somebody in mind, um, but he won't tell me. I mean, I understand that. I just that right? thought that this <laughs> I'm is speaking for you, although I haven't talked to him about this property at all. Very detailed. This is the first time I've mentioned it to him. I'm confident that he thinks they fit. Although he is not a planner. He is an engineer by training. <laughs> I would like to have that pointed out whenever I have the opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> he also points out I'm not just an engineer. An engineer. Yeah, just an engineer. I've tried to claim play engineer as a title, uh, hybrid, but that also doesn't stick as well. But he's, he's, it's a lot of work to be a PE. Okay. Questions? Ms. Green, are you, are you comfortable setting a public hearing for these? Two separate public hearings for April 7th. I'll make a motion. Do you need two separate motions? I need two separate motions. One to consider zoning the city's property from park to CH and GDO3. So moved. Second. Motion and a second for April 7th public hearing. All in favor, please state aye. 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 Any opposed? The second motion would be for the uh, five remaining properties to be keep their base zone of CH RS15 and to be zoned to GDO1. Second. Motion and a second. Also for April 7th. All in favor, please state aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Motions pass. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Green. So do we have any other staff reports or any other business? Nothing here. Okay. All right. If not, then we stand adjourned.